How's it going tonight, everybody? Uh, this is going to be a really quick video. Uh, this is just one that I've kind of wanted to make for a little bit. Um, what it's going to be looking at is it's going to be looking at the scene that I did. Um, I just called this like high rise apartment. Um, but what I did is I originally rendered it in, um, inside of Blender, uh, but then I wanted to take it to Lumion and kind of see, you know, how that worked out and how close I could actually get it. Uh, I am going to point out some of the differences in the pictures um, and some of the strengths and weaknesses uh, of both of them. So right off the bat, what you might notice is that I had to change out the plant. Um, Lumion, uh, one of Lumion's greatest strengths is it's like foliage, it's plants, everything like that. So in my opinion, whenever you get the chance to actually use like uh, a fine nature or something like that, delete what you have that you're importing to Lumion and use that one. Uh, I find it just works better with the scene. Um, but um, yeah, when it comes to like the actual wall textures, they look pretty close. I think that I actually altered um, the texture here. It kind of looks a little lighter than this one. I don't think that's a Lumion or Blender. I think that was just me that did that. Um, but as you can see, like the rug comes in really well because that's not actually Lumion fur. Like that was an actual... Um, displaced rug, I believe, from iMesh that I brought in here. It looks really great in both of them. And this is kind of going back to what I was talking about, where Lumion is better when you actually bring in the geometry. So the more work that you can do and bring into Lumion, the better it is. Uh, example is like, you know, a siding, um, <clears throat> a siding texture is not going to look as good as if you go and actually hand model the siding. That's just kind of like a universal truth with Lumion, which isn't necessarily bad um, because you can still save a lot of time by doing that extra work. Um, you just have to have a good balance between the actual geometry and the texture. Um, if we're looking at it too, the background image looks different, but I think that's just the focal length. Um, I didn't line them up as well as I should have, but the just com for comparing the quality, um, I think it's pretty good. Now, the area that I think I can see the biggest difference is the light. Um, so Lumion obviously does not have any point lights, um, like that, that would be a fill light or an Omni light that can cast shadow. I don't completely understand why that is probably like the most annoying thing about using Lumion because it's, it's, it seems like it's very necessary, but you know, I don't really understand behind the scenes. Um, so I can't really speak on that, but as you can see, like between the emissiveness of kind of this thing, like the more emissive something is in Lumion, I find that it, it kind of loses its color quickly. Like if something gets sort of bright and it's orange, it's just going to turn white. So I couldn't quite capture that same uh, kind of like orange uh, fluorescent look with this one, that really warm light. Um, the other thing too, is I found that when I was increasing the Omni light, it was just not like it wasn't, I guess it wasn't like giving me the effect that I want. Like this one, I just kind of threw a point light in. Uh, and it kind of filled up that warmth really well. I did kind of get the effect in Lumion and, you know, it being a real time render engine, um, you are going to have some compromise like that. Um, but that was the only thing that I really felt was, you know, kind of annoying. Um, I guess it's worth pointing out too, is that this, the, um, the lights that I put in here, I think they were IES profile. So I could have matched that up directly and maybe gotten rid of some of this kind of edge there, but that, that's close enough. Like Lumion does actually have pretty good spotlights, um, especially with the IES light changes that kind of came in. Um, but uh, we are going to look at some other um, scenes I took here. It is worth mentioning too, though, that this is basically the perfect Lumion interior scene. Like uh, for like actually setting something up, like you can't it wouldn't look this comparable if the, that massive window wasn't there because Lumion, the problem with Lumion interiors is that it's completely, in my, pen, in my opinion, dependent on having natural light. Like the pictures that you're going to see um, that are like the best of the best, like it, I, I don't think I've ever seen one that has no natural light that I was honestly like, that's an amazing picture because I honestly don't know if it's completely possible. Um, to make like a completely photorealistic picture without these massive lights um, or without these massive like windows because you need so much natural light. That's why Lumion is actually so good at doing exteriors um, because obviously there's, there's tons of natural light. Um, the, the natural light and foliage, grass, that kind of stuff is, are the two of Lumion's strengths in my opinion. Um, those are the two areas that like if you can have a lot of those in your scene, you're going to have a really nice Lumion scene. Um, but let's, uh, let me just pull... Some more of these up here. I don't know where I just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of flip through the pictures. Cause I try to take mostly the same images. So this one, 
in this one. Right. So this one, um, th this one is again, very comparable. Th the only difference between them is the focal length. Like I'm not going to get, I'm not going to look too much into that. Um, just because I, I could have made that a little bit closer, but, um, this one actually is the Lumion one. Oh, um, yeah, so this one is the Lumion one. Um, if you have trouble telling them apart at all, the, the Lumion backsplash here is darker. Um, but yeah, you know, for this particular scene, I thought it came out really well. Um, I was pretty impressed with how it actually came in, um, especially where since I did it in Blender and then I was moving it over to um, moving it over to Lumion. Um, everything was basically done. Like when you set your scene up in Blender, if you do it correctly, and you just have a basic color map going into the principal node, um, which is like the main texture setup for cycles, uh, and I guess Eevee as well. But um, that will just, you, the color map will be there in Blender, like, or sorry, be there in Lumion, like uh, the Lime exporter does for 3ds Max. So it was very easy to set this up. But oh my god, the most frustrating thing about this is the fact that for some reason in Lumion, and I don't understand this at all, is like you can't turn off Lumion making you a normal map right off the bat. And I'm pretty sure that that and the, the .dds, which I do like having that, but between those two things, you actually have to wait a very long time to change your textures, even though the color map is already on there and I have the normal map, I have to click, turn it into a Lumion material, wait for it to make a normal map that I just go and delete right away. Um, I've, I've put in some feedback about this and hopefully they change it because it would take me less than 10 minutes to do this entire scene in Lumion, maybe even five minutes if it comes in directly from Blender and I could just click the material, throw the normal map on. Like the, being able to create a normal map for something is actually a great feature to have. I just don't want it on all the time because this took me probably like half an hour, 40 minutes where it's like every time I had to change a texture, I'm waiting like 30, 40, maybe even a minute. Um, sorry, 30 or 40 seconds to like a minute. So that is something I hope gets changed because it's it kind of makes me sometimes not even want to put a you know make it a lumion material because i can just leave it with the color map and save time even though it doesn't look as good um but yeah we'll keep uh we'll keep going through here and look at a couple more images so i think this one is a good one to compare so this is uh blender and this is lumion so the reason why I want to compare this one is that I found this angle actually wasn't, uh, the Lumion one didn't look as good. Um, is this one actually? Yeah, I think I, yeah, it's close enough, but, um, so this kind of goes to what I was saying about, um, the Omni light. Now, in my opinion, you can kind of see the difference here of, um, you know, the, this is definitely a lot whiter than this one. Um, the, the coloring doesn't look too, too bad, like the actual light, but the shadows aren't as like rich, I guess. Like as you can see down here, uh, you get that really hard edge of the shadows here. Um, the the bag is really like just a lot of contrast. The pillows, like you can see all the fabric, but the Omni light just kind of blows that out. And you know, you'd have the same problem with the fill light. Um, I think that's just kind of the nature of it, which it's not a terrible trade-off. Like, you know, this isn't a terrible picture. It, it, it does work. It's just that you do lose some of the, I guess some of the quality that you would have in this one. Um, but again, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like that's just, I guess, something to kind of keep in mind. Um, so yeah, you know, you are able to make very nice interiors inside of Lumion, but I just think that the biggest problem is, is that doing like the difference in quality between when there's natural light and there's not natural light in your scene is it's just not even comparable. And I, that is actually one of the main reasons why when we're doing virtual tours, we normally use blender because, if we're doing like the main living room and there's like a window, um, then, you know, we can make the images very comparable. Like the panoramas look very similar, even though you can't use things like skylight, you can still kind of make it work. Um, because sometimes I'll just take like 50 images in a circle and then stitch them all together to make a 360. Um, but yeah, it, it's just like, it, you know, there's going to be some scenes like you're doing an apartment building and then there's like interior bathrooms. And like, I, I just, I find that like the tools for the lighting are not like completely there. Um, there are some things I hope that they kind of change in the future. And I really don't even think that like the, you know, everybody wants like the real time ray tracing. I don't think that that is actually as attractive as some people might think like for the lighting. Yeah, it would definitely help reflections. It would definitely help. 
But I think that having ray tracing, like it might, it's it's not going to be as like this this on switch where everything gets better because if you've actually used Unreal Engine, and you try and learn it, like it's not a, it's not as simple as you think. Like you have to deal a lot with noise. Um, that's something. So like Lumion would then have all this noise introduced that you'd have to fix. Um, if you don't have that great of a computer, like if you ever kind of say to yourself like my computer's kind of holding me back you're not doing rate like you're not gonna be able to do ray tracing in lumion it's not gonna happen um like i have a 2080 ti and even that can struggle when you're doing ray tracing things like that like i just did an 8k panorama at 500 samples in blender and that took through i think like 30 minutes for my my two my two graphics cards um which are the same model and so um yeah, that, that is just something to kind of keep in mind. Like Blender obviously has, like it can do really fantastic images. I think this one took about 10 minutes um, with two graphics cards. So I think it'd be about 20 minutes. Um, and then in comparison, I basically set up this entire scene and rendered it out in like 30 minutes, which it could have been a lot faster if that, that normal map thing wasn't there. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, yeah, I just want to talk quickly about some of the comparisons. I know this is kind of a messy video, but I just kind of wanted to show, um, I guess a little bit about this work. Um, this is a scene that I really enjoyed doing and I'm going to be doing, um, more like this, except I am going to be doing another video where I compare scenes without natural light. Um, just to kind of talk a little bit more about, um, I guess like lighting up Lumion scenes without, um, you know, without the natural light, but then also kind of showing the uh, comparisons. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this is a, um, yeah, I know this is kind of a different video than I normally do because we're just looking at pictures and I'm talking, but I just kind of wanted to show these. All of these are available for download if you're interested in them. Um, the, uh, I think all the models came either from TurboSquid or iMesh.com. Um, so, um, yeah, the background image I can also make available. That was just one that we made in our city of Halifax. Um, so if you kind of like um, you like the background and you want something just to throw in your scenes, I'll also make that available for download. Um, all I ask is that you uh, like the video. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, uh, you consider uh, dropping a subscribe and checking out some future videos. Uh, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Have a great night.